What's up, everyone? Welcome to Web3 SQL Weekly, where I'm going to be breaking down one query a week into bite-sized bits, making both the SQL and the blockchain concepts a little more digestible. All of these queries are submitted by the community and voted on by the community. The link to get involved is in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into the first query. So for today, the question was asked by Dens. And again, you can find the link to this board in the description and submit your own queries. Dens is asking, um, explaining the logic of getting ETH balances. All right, so if I copy this paste in here, this was an old query of mine where I queried for all of the Gnosis safes and got their ETH and ERC20 values and basically did some price joins, yada. It's uh, complex. We're not going to do all the logic of this today. However, the portion I am going to cover is this ETH balances portion from line 15 to line 57. But before getting into the query, we actually need some background context on what ETH is. So let's start with some background context on what exactly ETH or native token is. So if I go to Etherscan, you're going to see Ether prices here, yada, yada. If I go to any of these, this one's not a good example, but if I go to this one, you'll see if I go to any address, there's some balance of Ether, right? Ether is the native token in this case, and it's different from wrapped ETH or USDC because those are ERC-20 tokens, and ERC-20 tokens live in contracts. But the native token, in this case ETH or Ether, is directly stored in the chain's like state itself. Right, so it's stored in the chain state itself and it has its own functions for calling the transfer of these native tokens or of ETH, right? So every single chain, at least every single EVM, Ethereum virtual machine chain has a native token. In the case of Phantom, it'd be the FTM token. In the case of Avalanche, it's the AVAX token. In the case of rollups like Arbitrum and Optimism, they actually still use ETH as their native token. But functionally, it does the same thing. It's stored in the state. It's used to pay for gas fees, among other things and it shows up in the data as a trace or under the traces table All right so that's a mouthful um and that's probably still confusing All right so i'm going to have us look at some examples first i've pulled up this example transaction on etherscan it's linked in the newsletter article but you can see here that this was a 2.3 eth transfer from this address to this address 2.3 eth was sent 0.021 ETH was spent on gas, right? You'll see if I take this transaction hash and we query on it. So I'm going to go to the V2 engine from ethereum.transactions where hash equals this. And just to make it run faster, let's get the block number as well. And block number equals this. You'll see here that the value was 23 with all of these zeros. And remember here is 2.3, right? So why is this value so high? It's because this is in way, right? Way is just like the smallest unit of ETH possible. So ETH is stored to 18 decimals. So in this case, to get the right value, I need to divide this by basically 10 to the 18th power. So it's 2.3, right? So keep this in mind later, it is important. We actually want to go deeper. We want to go to traces. All right, so let's look at or traces where transaction hash. So you can see here that the value is actually still the same, but if I go all the way to the right for this table, there's a few new columns. Specifically, there's a type and a call type. And if the call type and type are both call here, that means that there was a ETH transfer involved. So let's look at a slightly more complex transaction. This isn't the easiest way to visualize things, especially if you're looking at a more complex transaction. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this hash and I'm going to go to falcon.blocksec.com and we're going to search up this transaction. And this explorer gives you much better details on where value was transferred from and to. And more specifically, you can see the trace. Right, so in this case, the zeroth trace, basically the first call, was a transfer of 2.3 ETH that was received by this address. Right. For data analysis, you're going to have to get used to not 
only relying on Etherscan. Etherscan is a great kind of beginner's tool, but if you want to go more advanced, start using explorers like BlocksX. So let's take a little more of a complex example now, and I'm going to take this transaction hash into here. And this is an NFT mint, right? This is someone went and minted Fidenza or an NFT from Artblocks and they paid 0.17 ETH for the mint. But you can see here, there's a few other transfers that happen under the hood, right? So let's take this and go to Blocksack again. And you can see they nicely show, okay, 0.17 ETH was sent to this address, but then this address immediately sent it and split it out. And in this case, if you know anything about NFTs, there's usually normal a uh, bunch of receivers where like art blocks takes a fee, the artist takes most of the profit, and the artist sometimes donates part of the profit to some sort of charity or fund. So if we look here, wow, traces are a lot more complex now, but all we really care about are the calls. You can see there's other like function calls here that you don't really have to get into now, but we just care about where a call happens and a value is attached. So hopefully that should give you an intuition on the blockchain concepts you need to know. Now let's actually look at the SQL query to figure out the balance of an address. Okay, so for this query, let's get the balance of the data DGEN's address. All right, so I'm going to copy the address. I'm going to put it into here. And let's start with the CTE, which just stores a subquery. I'm going to call this as transfer in. And what we're going to do is we're going to select from Ethereum.traces where two, so the receiver of ETH is equal to this wallet address. And I wanted where, let me just check the names of the columns. I wanted where type equals call and where call type. If you remember earlier, the call type we saw was call, but there's actually a few call types we don't want to include. And this is just filtering to make things faster. We don't want to include delegate calls, which is essentially call forwarding. We don't want to include static calls and we don't and we don't want to include call code right uh but it is fine if call type oops is null then that's fine too all right now let's just do one more thing let's filter for value greater than or equal to zero and let's just run this to see what we get. Cannot apply var car less than integer. This is because value is actually stored as a string. So I need to cast this to double. So now if I run it again, you'll see there's actually only one transaction here where five something with a lot of zeros was sent to this address, all right? And I can find the transaction hash here which if I go back here, it's actually this first transfer here where 0.05 ETH was sent to the wallet. Again, remember earlier that this value shown here is in way. Way is the smallest unit of ETH, right? Basically, ETH is divided into 18 decimals. Way is 1 to the 18th, basically. So to get accurate values, we're going to want to divide value by 18. And let's just sum things up right now. Excuse me, divided by 1e18, which is 10 to the power of 18. And I'm going to call this eth in. So we know that this is just going to sum to 0 0.05. So this is the first part done. Obviously, I do not have 0 0.05 left in here. I actually have much less than that. So let's check our transfers out as we're going to take the same code here. And instead of filtering for two, I'm going to filter for from, right? And I have to put quotes around from because from is like a reserved keyword. So to tell that it's a column, uh, I have to put quotes. So now we're going to call this ETH out. 
but let me just comment this out and see what out transfers I do have. So you're going to see, I actually have no transfers out. I've never sent ETH out of this address. So if I've never sent ETH out, then how do I only have 0.009 ETH left? And that's because you have to pay transaction fees whenever you do a transaction. So registering an ENS, sending some USDC or sending some NFTs or whatnot, it all costs gas. So I have to include gas in my transfers out. I prefer to do this as a separate CTE. And there's actually this nice gas spell, which is like an abstraction that Dune has created for you, where instead of me having to calculate the gas spent myself, I can actually just reference the gas spell so if I search up gas here, there's actually gas fees as a table. So I can do select all from gas fees where blockchain equals Ethereum and where the transaction sender is equal to this address. All right. So let's just check this real quick. Okay. So you can see that I have four transactions here and these hashes match the hashes that I sent. There's like a 497, a 60. So now we need to get the gas paid. So all I need to do is take the gas price uh, in way and then multiply it by the gas used. And you'll notice that this says way, not way. So that's because it's 10 to the 9 instead of 10 to the 18. I know it's confusing. I didn't make the naming decisions here. It is what it is, right? So I'm going to multiply this by the gas that was used versus the gas that was paid. And if you want to just do a back the envelope check here, we can do the gas price multiplied by the gas used. And you'll see if we didn't divide this by... 1 to the 9 at 0 0.00144, which if I go here, this one is 0 0.00144, 642, 642, yada. All right, so let's just do sum of gas price way, way dot times gas used divided by 9 as gas spent. So if I take this, then you'll see that my gas spent is 40076, yada, yada, yada. And if I take that 0 0.05 and subtract it, then you'll see 375954375954 rounded is exactly what we have here. So let's just put this into the query. I'm going to select all from transfer in because for any ETH to ever have transferred out, something had to have been transferred in first. So this is a safe place to start. And there's a couple ways of doing this. Normally you would have the address of the, of whoever's spending or whoever's balance you're trying to get if you have like a list of addresses. So then you would join on address. But because I don't have any of that, I'm just gonna join on one equals one, which is saying, hey, for every row here, join it to every row here. So then let's do the same thing for gas spent. GS on one equals one. So if you don't know what this looks like, let's just take a look. So here we can see Ethan was 0 0.05. No ETH went out. And this was the gas spent. We need to put this all together. So we're going to do... Logically, it's this. However, if you subtract a null value or add a null value or anything, then everything becomes null. So we need to use the coalesce function, which returns the first non-null value from a list, this being the list. So in this case, if eth out is zero, or if eth out is null, it's going to be zero. We need to do the same thing on gas spent, and that's because you might be checking the balance of a contract address. And in, in that case, contracts never are the sender of a transaction, so they never pay gas. So then gas spent would be null, and we don't want that edge case where it causes the balance to be null, so we put a coalesce in there. So let's check that work. And here we go. We have this balance here, which if I just copy it over, 22375 595 393 
one one basically the same thing there's a bit of a rounding error so the last digits aren't correct here with this let's just add some glitter on top and let's make these parameters instead of hard code just so that this becomes more usable for anyone else i'm going to replace the addresses and then i'm also going to add a counter just so it's easier for people to read things i'm going to say i want this balance and i want it to be let's say five decimals and this is going to be eth in Let's just say ETH, and this is going to be balance of address. All right, so that this counter is easily shareable and put in can be put into dashboards, and it's much nicer to look at than just a table. If you want to take this a step further and tackle the bonus question is going to be, how do you get the total net flows into and out of an address? So like by source. For example, if I took a look at the ETH deposit contract and the query is written out here, don't cheat, but essentially there's the ETH deposit contract that Lido and everyone else stakes or deposits their ETH into for ETH 2.0. And this query allows you to say, hey, I want to see the total amount of ETH that has come in and out by holder. So in this case, there's only ETH flows in, but now that you understand how to get the balance of ETH for an address, try and basically reverse it and say, I know the net balance is, but what affected the balances over time? This is a great way of analyzing contracts and a very important query to have in your toolkit. Again, you can submit a query or vote on a query for next week. Link is in the description below. Please get involved. Let me know if you learned something. Let me know what you want to learn. And I will see you next time.